big TV show from the sky From 20,000 miles above the ground We'll hear the news and views from all around Way up high there'll be A big TV show from the sky There isn't anything that's taking place We won't be hearing not from outer space A great event The president The crowning of a king A scientist who heads the list Will see most everything Some fine day we'll see a big TV show from the sky You know the telephone and radio Can tell us all the things we want to know A new invention receives attention A deed that's noble, the news is global As every day goes by Ever since man looked up at the sky and saw the moon, he became curious. What was it like up there? Did people live on the moon? There were some men who actually tried to reach the moon, and many strange stories have been told about those fantastic adventures. Now if man could build a rocket ship fast enough and strong enough to make the trip, he could travel through space to every place. Man wondered about this for years and years. We've told you something about the first space engineers, but in order to make the moon journey, first of all, we have to know how far away the moon is from the Earth. Fifty round trips to California, from the city of New York, is the distance to the moon. We'll go there pretty soon. Seven miles a second, seven miles a second. Our rocket ship will make the trip in seven miles a second. Fifty round trips to California. Yeah. If we travel along the road in a car that has the power of sixty miles an hour, not seven miles a second, seven miles a second. Our rocket ship will make the trip in seven miles a second. to California, but there's one thing we should know, that with gravity around, our car can't leave the ground. But for the purposes of space travel, our rocket trajectory would have to attain an escape velocity of 25,000 miles an hour, which is seven miles a second, seven miles a second. Our rocket ship will make the trip in seven miles a second. Now very, very soon, we're going to the moon, and the distance we found out is somewhere almost just about 50 round trips, 50 round trips, 50 round trips to California. Put a penny in the scale and weigh yourself on the planet Earth. If you weigh 102, why this is what your weight is worth on a penny scale on the planet Earth. Put a penny in the scale and weigh yourself on the planet Mars. You will weigh just 38 pounds. And just in case you've never heard on the planet Mars, you will weigh one third. The bigger the planet, the more you will weigh. The bigger the planet, the more you will weigh. That's the rule for you and me. That's the law of gravity. Put a penny in the scale and weigh yourself on old Jupiter. You will weigh 252 for a scale on Jupiter is such. You will weigh just twice and a half as much. Planet. 
it, the more you will weigh. That's the rule for you and me. That's the law of gravity. Top near the equator, where the air is very thin, high above the dense atmosphere of the Earth. Our rocket ship is being boarded now, and in a few seconds we will lift off the launching pad. Our journey to the moon will take about four days. We will travel at a speed of seven miles per second, which is the speed we'll need to pull away from the Earth's gravity into outer space. Ten, nine, eight. Now we're approaching zero seconds, which is firing time. Two, one, zero, fire! It has taken us only three minutes to leave the Earth, and in eight minutes our ship is far outside the Earth's atmosphere. Looking through the window of our rocket ship, we can see the Earth below. The sky is black, a blanket in space, with stars like jewels spread over an ebony ceiling. What wonderful things we see! Through a window in space, we can see the stars. silvery sight, an island so bright, and over there's the planet Mars. Through a window in space, headed for the moon, the sky's a blanket of black, and when we look back, the earth seems like a toy balloon. As we glide, there's a fabulous world inside. And we ride through the silence of is a great shining island, the moon. One side shines with great brightness from the light of the sun. But the sky isn't blue as we saw it from the earth during the daytime. It always looked blue because the atmosphere of the earth spread the rays of the sun across the heavens and gave it that beautiful color. But the moon has no atmosphere and so the sky looks black. We're about to make our landing. We fire our retro rocket to resist the pull of the moon's gravity and make a safe landing. And now as we slowly descend toward a huge crater in this dark, silent world, we know we are the first voyagers from Earth to reach the moon. We've made it there as we fly, make ready to land on the moon. Here we are on the moon. We carry our oxygen tanks on our backs, and we are wearing special protective suits so that we may walk about the surface of the moon and make our observations. Let's go exploring. We see no plants or animals because there is no water or oxygen to supply them so that they may live and breathe. 
the color of the ground is gray, somewhat like ashes. And some parts of the moon seem to be darker than others. These dark patches were once thought to be seas. Perhaps there were seas on the moon a long, long time ago. And when we look at a map of the moon, we can locate the seas by name. Just as if we were finding Texas or the Gulf of Mexico on a map of the United States. Here's one. It's called the Sea of Showers. There's a place on the moon we call the Sea of Showers Where waves of water never fall And flowers never bloom at all On our visit to the moon, we learn that the Sea of Showers is really a desert plain, dry, without a drop of water. What's that ahead? A mountain? This mountain seems to be almost a mile wide. And we've read a lot about craters on the moon, shaped like big saucers for giant teacups. Some of them are bigger than one of our states in the USA. The moon travels around and around the Earth, and while it makes this journey, it also turns on its own axis. One night, we may behold a beautiful round moon, and on another night, it's a crescent-shaped moon, like a curved bow. But the moon never really changes shape. It only seems to be changing shape when we look at it on different nights. But the moon is always full and round, but we see only parts of it at a time as it spins around the Earth. That's why we have a new moon, a first quarter, a full moon, and a last quarter. Lovers gaze at the moon, and poets and composers write songs about the moon, while scientists study its course and its surfaces, and wonder about the side of the moon that they have never seen. Only one side of the moon faces the Earth. Through their telescopes, they have learned much about this side of the moon, its craters, its mountains, and its seas. And now at last, in a few short years, a great dream of mankind through the centuries will come true. We will see the day when man may set foot on the silent world of the moon, and scientists can explore the unknown side. Perhaps you will visit the moon and see many wonderful things. Now here is a name on the colorful map of the moon. It's called Rainbow Bay. Would you like to go there?
We have been training for this flight for two years. Right now, we are orbiting the Earth at an altitude of 400 miles. The first expedition to Mars is about to take place. At zero flight time, the rocket motor of our spaceship will start firing, and our ship will break out of orbit. Twelve minutes later, we will move at six miles per second. You men know we have already made the first flight around the moon. Now, for the first time in man's history, we enter a new era in man's exploration of space and the planets. Before making our first landing on Mars, we will effect a landing on the minor planet Eros, which is three-fourths of the way to our final destination. When the two orbits of the planets cross, we will put our spaceship into the orbit of the planet Mars, and we will coast to its terrain by way of its own gravitational pull. It will be necessary to fire retro rockets, as you know, in order to resist the gravity pull of Mars and to make a safe landing. As to Mars itself, we already know that it's a smaller world than our own planet Earth. Every day on Mars is about one half hour longer than an Earth day. Just for review, let's ask our flight engineer what kind of weather we will find on Mars. At night, the temperature would be about 75 degrees below zero. The reason for this is that the atmosphere is extremely thin. It does not offer enough protection to explorers from Earth. During the day, of course, the weather can be quite bearable. And in the early afternoon in the summer, the weather would be about 70 degrees above zero, which is a comfortable temperature. We also know there is water on Mars because the polar ice caps have shown us that ice and snow have formed, but these begin to melt in the spring. There are books by great scientists who write of canals on Mars. If there are canals, perhaps intelligent Martians have built them. Perhaps there is life on Mars, but we cannot explain why these canals, as they seem to us, have straight lines. They could be natural formations, or perhaps there are other causes. You men will learn the truth at last. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, fire! With a great big noise like thunder, a rocket takes off for space. 